the second century, the Romans would heat up wine to defend their bodies against the bitter winters. Today, we are celebrating autumn and giving it a try ourselves. Mixologist Jason Stubfield is showing us a simple mold wine recipe to warm you up this fall season. Hey, Stub, how are you? Glad to be here on a beautiful autumn Friday. I know, and you've got the perfect recipe for us. So to start, what ingredients do we need? All right, so it's very simple. Mold wine, it, it's kind of anyone's game, but the basic recipe is going to be uh, cinnamon sticks, uh, some whole cloves, some kind of sweetener, and maybe a little bit of sweet citrus juice. And in this case, we usually like to use orange. Mm, that sounds delicious. So uh, we have the recipe uh, up on our screen. Can you show us how to make it? Absolutely. So we're going to just add our, all the ingredients to a pan. So we have our dry red wine. And we normally want to use something that's a little fruit forward. So I'm using Merlot today, but uh, Grenache or Garnacha is also a good choice, as is Zinfandel. So we're going to add the wine, our little bit of sweetener. In this case, I'm using simple syrup today. You can use maple syrup if you'd like. And then we're going to add a couple of whole cinnamon sticks and whole cloves to this uh, mix. And we're going to heat it very, very slowly. You don't want to boil the wine, but you want to let it uh, simmer very slowly until it's just under boiling. So you don't boil off all the alcohol and it's going to be a little bitter if you get it too hot too quickly. Wow, this looks absolutely fantastic. The perfect thing to get you uh, feeling the fall spirit. And why is this such a great adult drink when the weather gets cooler? Well, you know, it's it's great to have outside. Like later tonight, I'll be having a, a bonfire here in the clearing behind the woods uh, with the in-laws oh. and uh, warm us up around the fire. It's just a delicious, uh, it's spicy, it's got the fall flavors in there. And um, wow, it's just a great thing to have around the fire. And if you really want to kick it up, you can add, uh, you know, maybe an eighth a cup of brandy to this as well. Oh, that does take it up a notch, doesn't it? Absolutely. And what's so great about mold wine? Who would like it? Uh, you know, this isn't, isn't necessarily something that wine drinkers uh, would flock to, but people who think they don't like wine would love this. The additional sweetness, and then once again, the false spices in there. You can add, you know, star anise as well. It's, it's really anyone's game, but if you're adding spices to it, um, add whole spices in there as you're mulling it. That way you don't have to filter it and actually stir everything up in there as well. Oh, that's a great little tip for us. And you were talking about the different wines. Can you use a white wine instead if you uh, have a better taste for that? You know, generally people do not use the white wine uh, for mulled wines because um, you want that big fruit flavor that you're getting and, and a little bit of that um, the tannic the tannic structure you're going to get from a red wine. And those tannins are those puckery things in red wine sometimes that make your mouth kind of like that. And that's why you want to use a less tannic wine. But the tannins in red wine are definitely going to stand up to these uh, the spices in our mulled wine. All right. And of course, we're going to have your recipe on our website. I can't wait to try it. I hope you have a great little bonfire with the in-laws tonight. Absolutely. Thanks, Rachel. All right. And for more recipes like this one, head over to CorkEnvy.com. We'll also have a link at Dayton Blue Ridge's website.